There's a well-known story in the Bible where Jesus calms a storm, and that story has been so misused by so many Christians, it's been so mistaught by so many preachers, that I think we need to take that up on the 5-Minute Bible Study. My name is John Whitaker, and thanks for checking out the 5-Minute Bible Study. I really believe Bible teaching ought to be blue jeans theology, and so I help people follow Jesus by connecting the Bible to life. So often, this well-known story is taught for the idea that Jesus will calm the storms in your life, and if you just have enough faith and just trust Him enough, that Jesus is going to bring peace and safety and security to your life. But practically speaking, we know that's not true. We see it in the news where churches on Easter in Sri Lanka are bombed. We experience it in our own life when loved ones die of cancer. In fact, I had uh, I know of a pastor friend who went into a deep, dark spiritual depression because he prayed and fasted. He invited his faithful followers of Jesus uh, that were part of his church to pray and fast along with him. And they were praying and fasting for a fellow pastor who had cancer, and that pastor died. And this sent this pastor friend of mine into a deep, dark spiritual depression. The reality is, is we don't have a promise that God's going to calm the storms of our life. But that's not the point of this story. This well-known story, the calming of the storm, shows up in three out of the four Gospels, and I want to look at it in Mark's version of it, Mark chapter 4. On that day, Mark writes, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and there were other boats with him. And a great windstorm arose. This is apparently quite common on the Sea of Galilee, where just the nature of the setting, uh, winds can rush down, usually out of the eastern hills, and whip up the sea quite quickly. And so that apparently is what happened. A great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking over the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. It was already filling up with water. But Jesus was in the stern, in the back of the boat, asleep on the cushion. This is quite common in their boats where they would have sort of a little platform with a cushion on it in the back. Well, Jesus is back there. He's asleep in the boat. Uh, they came to him, it says, and they woke him saying, Teacher, don't you care that we're drowning? And Jesus awoke and rebuked the wind and the sea saying, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm on the sea. I picture it like glassy seas on a perfectly still morning where just perfectly calm. There was a great calm. And Jesus said to them, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? Now, whenever you're reading one of the Gospels, here's one of the challenges that makes understanding the Gospels hard, and probably why this story sometimes gets misused, is the Gospels operate sort of at what I like to describe as almost kind of two layers of meaning. You have the historical layer, the, the what happened layer. Like, in this case, Jesus is in a boat. There was a big windstorm. And Jesus was sleeping. They woke him up, and he calmed the storm. That's the what happened layer. But then there's also the, well, why did Mark tell this story this way layer, the literary layer? So you have the historical layer and the literary layer, and they work together to communicate meaning to us. And so Mark has told this story at this point in a particular way in his gospel. And so we want to try to understand why Mark told this story the way he did. And the first thing you need to notice in order to understand that is how the story begins. On that day when evening had come. Notice that. That is terribly, terribly important. In a narrative text like we have here, a storytelling text, that's pretty much like a therefore in a more kind of teaching text. And so on that day when evening had come means we need to figure out what was going on on that day. That's terribly important. So if you look back in the preceding context, what you notice is that Jesus had been teaching on that day. And he had specifically been teaching about the kingdom of God and how it would start small, little, and how it would get big. Um, and so on that day, when Jesus was teaching about the kingdom, this event happened. The other thing to notice about the way Mark tells the story is that uh, after Jesus had calmed the storm, he turns to his disciples and he says, why are you afraid? 
that seems like, man, if I'm in, you know, I want to push back and like, of course I'm afraid. This boat's going down, right? This boat seems like it's going to sink, man. We're filling up with water. And then he says, do you still have no faith? Well, again, our reaction shouldn't be, oh, well, you know, yeah, they should have had faith that Jesus could calm the storm, right? But these are Jews. They know their scriptures. And the only one who's ever been able to control the winds and the waves is Yahweh himself. And they're looking at Jesus, and he looks just like every other ordinary Jew, except they believe maybe he's the Messiah. They believe that he's the one that's come to redeem Israel. But they didn't expect Yahweh to become flesh. They didn't expect God to become human. So why do you have no faith? Well, what faith then did Jesus expect them to have? Again, you have to put that together with on that day. What faith did Jesus expect him to have? Well, Jesus had just promised on that day that his kingdom would start small and get big, right? Um, So what Jesus is saying to them is, do you believe me? Do you believe that I can secure the kingdom? Do you believe me? Just a couple hours ago, I said, this kingdom is going to grow and grow and grow and fill the whole world. Don't you believe me? Don't you have confidence that I can build my kingdom? And that's the faith he's expecting them to have. Faith in his promise and his word that he had just taught them on that very day. And so the whole point of this story is this, that God's kingdom is secure because the king's power is great. So how does that help us in life? Well, what it means is when attacks happen like those that happened in Sri Lanka, They're not going to stop God's kingdom from growing. They're not going to stop God's promises from being fulfilled. When pastors and other loved ones die of cancer and their bodies are racked by disease, that doesn't hinder God's kingdom from moving forward. That doesn't thwart his promises. God's kingdom will still come and his will still will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Someday, completely and totally. And we can look over the history of the church and we can look at faithful people who have been killed because of their faith. We can look at attacks on God's kingdom throughout history, and guess what? Jesus' word came true. The kingdom started out small, started out as Jesus and 12 followers in a boat on the Sea of Galilee being threatened by a storm. But the storm didn't stop the kingdom because the king's power is great. And all throughout history, um, Jesus' kingdom has continued to grow and to advance, and his promise became fulfilled, that the kingdom grew and filled the whole earth. And so in the midst of life, whatever life throws at you, whatever the enemy throws at you, whatever discouragements and disappointments come your way, remember the truth of this text is that we have a king whose whose power is so great, he can speak to the winds and the waves, and there can be a great calm, that he will build his kingdom. And that his word will be fulfilled, that someday his kingdom will come and his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So be faithful to the end because our king's power is great. Hey, thanks for checking out this video and checking out my channel. If this is your first time here, man, if you find Bible teaching that connects to everyday life helpful to you and helpful to following Jesus, then I would... I invite you just to subscribe to this channel so you don't ever miss a video. I release videos every single week. And and, um, if this particular video was helpful to you, then I would encourage you just to maybe leave me a comment. Let me know how it encouraged you and like this video and share it on social media with your friends and others so that more people could be encouraged by it. Stay faithful to Jesus and we will see you in the next video.